Hi there, and welcome to the Kingdom Sexuality Podcast. We're Paris and Alana, friends who have a heart for intimacy and long to uncover God's truth and design for sexual freedom within marriage. Welcome here. I feel like we often integrate the topic of communication within our episodes, but it is high time that we actually devote an entire episode into diving into the nitty gritties of communication. We so often hear that this is what makes a marriage great or from good to great or really awful to not so awful. (laughs) It It is the foundation. It really is. So the level of communication really determines so much of what a marriage is going to erupt into, right? So how does a couple go about having awesome communication? What does that look like? What is communication? We are going to hammer this out, but in true kingdom sexuality style, we're going to do so, especially in how communication will traverse over into talking about sex. Yeah. So again, although we're talking about this, we don't have this all figured out. (laughs) We're not experts. Um, And so if you listen to our podcast from the beginning, you'll remember one of our beginning episodes was when I had shared how learning to communicate with Jeff about sex was something that really helped us take um, our sex life to the next level, really. And it's something that like we still have to continually remember to do. I mean, we've said before, like the learning doesn't stop, right? We always have to keep learning, but um, communication is a huge part of intimacy. So like, yes, you can go about your life and never really talk about what goes down in the bedroom, but why? Like, why would you withhold that from your marriage? So regardless of where you're at in your marriage, whether you're newlyweds or you're decades into it, If you're not talking about your sex life with your spouse, now is the time. It's a new year. Let's start it off with a bang. And I realize that's also like a pun. (laughs) So here are some really practical ways to get the communication rolling. And the first one we're going to go into is prayer. You guys, I think Mm -hmm. you've probably figured it out by now. If we aren't praying, if we are not being intercessors over our marriage and our spouse and our sex life and everything, everything, you're just missing out on a lot. Yeah. So prayer should always be our first response to everything. We know that, right? And if we're not already, we're challenging you now to begin praying over your marriage and your sex life every single day. Mm -hmm. Bring it before Holy Spirit. Ask Holy Spirit to show you when the best time is to start chatting about sex with your spouse if this is something that you guys struggle with, okay? Mm -hmm. So some of you guys probably have great communication out there, but bringing the topic of sex in might be really awkward or weird because you haven't done it before. Mm -hmm. Maybe some of you guys are really battling through having fluent communication in general, and you're like, I... We can't even talk about sex right now, let alone Right? right? We've all been through different seasons in our marriages. We've all gone through these things, right? So bring it before the Lord in prayer and asking him to give you a heart that is sincere about this, that is a heart to listen and come alongside your spouse in this and also preparing your spouse for these conversations and that these roads are paved so that we can great conversation is a necessity to start this, right? Mm -hmm. And praying together as a couple, going back to this three strand cord, I'm forever going to go back to this. That's (laughs) where you're creating this unbreakable bond between you and the Lord and your husband, right? Together. You're coming before God in prayer and this is where you're going to be unbreakable, right? Mm -hmm. So in doing that, you are moving forward full of strength. You're walking in the power of God. You're destroying the enemy and his flaming arrows that you bet he's going to continually be throwing at you. Prayer is combat. Like it's active warfare. And we need to be praying over every area of your life, not uh, not excluding sex. That has Mm -hmm. to be in there. So prayer as a couple is literally life-changing. You know, do it. We, Neil and I actually just listened to a really incredible message um, yesterday on prayer as a couple. And I feel like so many of us love the, maybe the, it's easy or it's comfortable for us to pray 
separately. But when it comes to praying as a couple together over one another, that is where a lot of amazing stuff happens. And I loved how the pastor, he made a really amazing comment. He's like, if you're not coming together as a couple because you either deal with pride or you deal with whatever and you just don't want to do it, he's like, you're ultimately allowing demonic influence in right then and there because you're not embracing the power of prayer and Holy Spirit together as a couple doing that. And I was Mm. like, whoa, that's a perspective I never thought of. Right. I, I didn't. And I was like, that is so good. So, you know, getting to that point too of like, communicating together and talking about prayer and talking Mm -hmm. about the intimacy of that too. I mean, we're all about that here. So Alana, I I actually want to ask you that. Can we talk briefly about the intimacy of prayer together as a couple in comparison to just praying for each other by yourselves? Like that's an intimate thing. Yeah, no, for sure. And it makes me think of what Jody had said, you know, how as, you know, single people are looking for, for someone to, build a relationship with and how, why wouldn't you want to find someone who also is a believer to have them bring you to the throne room, right? And so I think it's a beautiful, a beautiful way to just get humble with each other because it's, it is, it can be a really vulnerable thing praying with one another, right? And especially when you're, you're bringing thoughts and bringing, you know, confessions and things that maybe you I mean, maybe you've talked about, but it's, it's different when you're bringing it to the throne room. Right. So I think it's really powerful and it's something that, you know, Jeff and I are just, we're getting, we're getting better at. And it's something that, um, you know, if someone doesn't grow up praying out loud, it can be really tough, really tricky and, um, really intimidating to start. So just with like baby steps, right. And, you know, encouraging, um, one another to, to pray together because yeah, it's, it's powerful. Yeah. I love that. I love that. It's such an intimate act because of the vulnerability Mm -hmm. involved, right? Like, I love that you mentioned that. So good. Okay. So let's get to number two. Mm -hmm. Um, so talking about sex with your spouse, make it really positive and encouraging rather than, um, coming at it from a critical attack ready stance. So this is huge. So talking, talking about sex, we were talking about prayer, but talking about sex can also be really vulnerable for people. Um, so keep that in mind when you're chatting with your spouse. So instead of statements like you always this, or you never this, um, change your language to I statements. Like I noticed we haven't done X, Y, Z in a while. Like, why do you feel like that is? Or why do you think that is? Or I love it when you do this or use phrases like, I feel like, I feel like this is kind of getting between us or, you know, I feel like maybe we could be doing this better or we could be talking about this more. And so there's no condemnation through bringing these things forth in humility and honorable love. And I feel like if you explain to your spouse, like, I know this is kind of a weird conversation, but like, I just kind of feel like we should you know, practice this or, you know, how do you feel about this or, you know, things like that, but just be really positive and encouraging because no one wants to be like trampled on when you're talking about sex. Like what a, it's like such a powerful thing. Like you could really destroy someone talking negatively about sex, right? Like what a way to knock someone down a bunch of pegs if you would do it in a negative way. So be really mindful of your words when you're talking about it. And I think also embracing the teamship of a marriage. You know, it's not you and me and a you problem and a me problem. Yeah. It's us. And when yeah. you can change your mindset to this is an us everything. Everything we go through is not an individual thing anymore. When we are married, we literally become one. That's scriptural. Like everything we do affects the other. Mm -hmm. So why wouldn't you view everything as, okay, we're a team. How are we going to get through this together? How are we going to manage this together? How are we going to combat this together? How are we going to address this together? Because we take everything on. Yeah. You know, as individuals, which is really, really beautiful. We take it on as as individuals within marriage because it's a teamship thing. So I think that's important when it comes to communication and keeping that key within your mind that this is an us thing. You know, 
Mm-hmm. And also think, you know, go back to the golden rule. Do unto others as you'd have them done to you. You yeah. not want to come at you like, blah, 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 and like pointing the finger and saying all the things that you're doing wrong, right? Like, so why would you do that to your spouse? You know, it's easy for us to boil all the things up and then like, you know, explode verbal yeah. diarrhea all over our spouse, <laughs> which is not okay, which goes back to communication. We should be having those conversations all the time. Like, Hey, this happened the other day. This is what it made me feel like. Can we work on this? Et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Another really good thing to implement into your marriage is, is to read, watch, or listen to resources together that are going to encourage you and uplift you and teach you in the area of communication. So this could be really huge if you're not sure where to start. If you're like, I, I literally don't even know how to talk to my husband. Like, it doesn't happen. Like, it just right. ends up in a fight. So use the resources already out there available as a couple together so you can start building that foundation together, you know, coming into that humbly together and being like, hey, you know, we suck at this. <laughs> can we <laughs> listen to this together and and get on the same team and start learning as a team? Because if one person is all for learning and the other person is not invited into that, that can even start its own rifts in and of itself. It's beautiful to be able to do things together, right? Um, and I think that's important to share that with your spouse as well. So yeah. I'm talking about resources. There's so many amazing things out there. We shared a little reel the other day just on four books that we really enjoy. We talk about so much stuff here on our podcast. There's another great podcast out there called XO um, Real Marriage Series by Grace and Mark Driscoll. And they're a pastor couple, like unreal good stuff on there. And Java with Julie is another incredible podcast out there specific on sexuality between married couples and the communication thing and all the things in there. So there's a lot out there. Um, it just takes like, get in there and start asking questions, ask other married couples. Okay. You know, we're struggling at this. Have you dealt with this? Like, is there anything you use to help you with this? Like get real with people too, because a lot of times it's honestly our own pride that keeps us from moving forward. And we need to nip that in the butt continually because it's actually going to just make us go backwards, backwards, backwards within our marriages. So get on, um, get honest with other couples as well. You know, couples that are, have good reputation, you know, maybe it's people within your church that hold leadership positions or, mentorship positions so you know that they're trustworthy awesome people and bring this forth to them too because this is a great place to start by you know even being covered um by other people in prayer in this Mm -hmm. area yeah no that's good so another thing you could do in learning to communicate is just ask each other questions and get really honest in every area of your life together Mm -hmm. so hiding things from your past or current struggles hurts unresolved conflict or concerns or dreams and desires does not make a good marriage. Yeah. You should not be hiding certain things that, you know, are like festering inside of you. Right. Yeah. So talk, express those things, listen. So here are some examples of some questions you could bring. Yeah. Um, so like how often do you like to have sex or what should we plan to do if you want it or I don't or vice versa? How do you think we are at communicating about sex? How could we improve this? Um, What do you think we're doing really well? What do you think we need to work on? Or how should I start, like, how should we start implementing these changes? Um, What do I do or not do during sex that's distracting for you? Or what should I do that's, like, what do I do that's encouraging for you during sex? Um, What's your favorite sexual memory from our marriage. So why is that? What turns you on? What turns you off? Like there's so many things that you could just chat about. And if you need to rewind, write these things down, do it because these are really good questions. Maybe I'll make some kind of graphic and we can have it in our Instagram. Yeah, so you like can look. To start. Like how yeah. do you start the conversation? Let's get back to basics here. Like yeah. how many of us, honestly, how often do we check in with our spouse and be like, Hey, what are your turn-ons right now? What mm-hmm. has anything changed that's like, it used to be a turn-on, but now it's a turn-off. Like how many of us actually sit down and ask those questions, right? Absolutely. We started implementing questions like that 
uh, quite a while ago. And I'll tell you guys from personal experience, it has been transformational on everything in our marriage. Like just ask, going back to those questions over and over again, you know, every, every so often it's huge because yep. people change, you know, and we grow together and we learn together. And it's a beautiful thing. It's a great thing to keep going back and get back to the foundation, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And no one can mind read, right? So, you know, your spouse doesn't necessarily know the answer to all these questions, even though you maybe assume they do and vice versa, right? Like maybe they just think, you know, what turns them on when you're like, actually have no idea. So just talk about it. Um, and if we aren't presenting ourselves as servant lovers to each other with listening ears and willing hearts and kind words, we're missing out on God's design for our marriage and the true gift of communication and intimacy that comes with that. It may be awkward the first time you sit down and you actually have a conversation about communication, <laughs> but you guys, this is necessary. It's mm-hmm. necessary. And you know, having those communication conversations around your intimate life is huge, you know, and the more you do it, the better you're going to become at it. It's just like sex. The more you do it, the better you become at it with your spouse, right? Mm -hmm. Communication is the same exact way. If you aren't communicating well as a couple, the marriage lacks. Like we all know that we don't need to be told that (laughs) we know it, right? Mm -hmm. And here at Kingdom Sexuality, we are not about that. Like we are here to see God transforming marriages, right? Mm -hmm. We are here to see that happening. We're praying for that over this podcast and all of our listeners. So like God's design of fullness and beauty within marriage, our hearts should be constantly aligning with his intentions for us. We need to own it and choose to go all out for our marriages because ultimately, this is hard truth, you guys, but we're speaking it. If your marriage sucks, it's because communication and responsibility have completely been disregarded or you expect the other person to pick up the slack. Marriage is not 50-50. It's 100 and 100. You go all in all the time. You read God's design for marriage in his heart and look at who he is. And we need to duplicate that and implement that because that's where the magic happens. You know, if we are not owning up to that... That is the enemy getting right in there, you guys. And we know we are in constant warfare right there. You know, going back to prayer, going back to communication, those are huge ways to kick and knock the enemy out of your marriage in those two areas. They're huge. Those are huge ways the enemies will just sneak in there. So we are the ones who choose how epic our marriages will be ultimately, right? Nobody else. We are the ones who choose how epic our marriages will be. Hey friends, thank you so much for hanging out with us as we dive deeper into meaningful, godly intimacy, tackle the hard questions, and embrace truth while we're at it. We're also on Instagram at Kingdom Sexuality. You'll find our Instagram handle below in the show notes, where you'll also see any other resource links we may have mentioned in today's episode. As always, our hearts are to cultivate deep community and freedom with you guys, and we cannot wait to continue this journey alongside you. We'll see you in the next episode.